Now I would kindly request Anil sir to deliver the presidential address. A very good afternoon to all of you. It is an honor to be here today. We gather not only to celebrate advancements in health and safety and environment, but also to reaffirm our shared commitment of fostering safer work environments and promoting the well-being of individuals as well as communities. At Safety Catch, our mission has always aligned with global standards set out by organizations like NIWASH, who are our driving partners. And also, we achieve this by aligning with academic institutions, universities, industry leaders, and as well as regulatory bodies. The insights shared here will definitely inspire us and equip us to address evolving challenges in safety and sustainability. Please join me in welcoming Pramod sir to the stage. The theme of this seminar is Educate, Empower and Enforce Safety in Industry 4.0. Nationally, we, will, we still see an average of three workplace fatalities per day. In Kerala, we record one fatality in every 30 days. Each of these statistics represents a life lost, a family impacted, something we must always keep in mind. So how do we tackle these challenges in this new era? The answer lies with the three keywords, educate, empower and enforce which is in same line with the triple strategy of the department, engineering, education, and enforcement. So when they need it, it's a step toward making safety education not just a one-time event, but an ongoing integrated process. Empowerment is equally vital in this changing industrial landscape. It's not enough for workers to simply be informed. They must also feel e equipped and confident to take action in the workplace. True empowerment means giving individuals and industries the tools and resources they need to create safer environment and to take proactive steps towards compliance with the safety standards. It's not just about creating policies, but about ensuring they are implemented effectively. A robust enforcement strategy ensures that safety regulations are consistently upheld across all sectors and that the industries are held accountable. As the com complexity of industrial operations increases, so too must the tools we use to monitor complaints and respond to potential risk. Together by educating, empowering, and enforcing, we can create a future where workplace fatalities and injuries are not just reduced, but eliminated entirely. Let us work toward a shared vision of Vision Zero, zero accident, zero fatalities, and zero occupational disease. Now, Section 7A of the Factories Act puts a very clear responsibility on the occupier or the employer to train his workforce so that they work safely. Yes, this is a very, very broad legislation. Now. We all are educated. It's not that we are not educated. But how much of that education is assisting us in our job? Because of the limitations in the <clears throat> education, empowering these safety officers is if not a difficulty, it is a challenge. Because today, you empower somebody and then something goes wrong, you become accountable. So, institutions that are working in the field of uh, safety, NEBOSH and its branches in India through various private agencies, should look at ensuring that the education delivered to the candidate is complete and 
he becomes he or she becomes a person who can be empowered with some authority and responsibility so that when we look at enforcement it is no longer a challenge please join me in welcoming mr andy shenstone to the stage so when we think and i think and my colleagues think and work with you about education empowerment and enforcing we take what we philosophize as being a whole systems approach it is important that we educate the workforce to be safe it is important that we educate those with responsibility for occupational safety and health and i have said in my opening remarks it is very important that we educate the leaders of today but the leaders of tomorrow to be the examples that we need within these organizations in whatever industry in whatever sector uh, and with whatever role that they fulfill working with you to empower those workers both occupational safety health and professionals and workers at whatever level to ensure their safety and security will be an important contributing part to that growth agenda because an effective and efficient economy looks after its people and enforcement yes important but enforcement as we've just heard from our previous learned speaker can take many forms education is part of enforcement but also the opportunity to look at regulations to encourage the right behaviors at the beginning of an industrial process as my learned colleague said to catch people through an audit is one thing but to help them realize the opportunity of getting it right to beginning is also extremely important and i always encourage when i speak to governments agencies within regions and within states and at a national level to think about how they judge the effectiveness of how they regulate because what we are trying to do is to drive the right behaviors not drive people on the opportunity for leaders to be encouraged to stand out and step up and speak about the importance of safety in the workplace so that those around them recognize that if they see something that is not right they can call it out with confidence and not be accused of being a problem that they can call it out and say yes you're correct we should be attending to that because if we don't someone is going to be injured please join me in welcoming mr anil to this stage continuous education about new tools safety protocols and risk mitigation techniques must be part of our future strategy so when we think about empowering empowering employees and safety managers is key to fostering a safety culture which all we talk daily providing more autonomy in enforcing safety measures so where do we need to reach we need to reach to this point where turning employees into proactive safety agents not just the rule followers that is where we need to think about empowering our employees and when it comes to enforcement as the learned speakers were rightly telling that we look at like a policeman <laughs> but i tell my students the future leaders are sitting here who has completed the nivosh diploma that we sh should never look as a policeman we should look as leaders we should be leaders we should guide our people on the right track so when we do enforcement we should think in that way that we are to educate them empower them now i would like to invite mr balakrishnan nair to the stage see everybody will be talking about you know safety officers safety managers or safety officials whatever and even anil sir has mentioned about that okay that you should not be only enforcing enforcing means should not be working like a policeman so here i would like to tell you that see you all should become safety professional my only thing is that okay you should be a safety professional and safety professional is definitely much more above all these 
clarifications or qualifications that you become. And once you become that, then naturally you automatically fall in every line. And also that you know you will be you know educating, you will be empowering, and also you will be enforcing the theme of the seminar in your organization, which ultimately can turn over to the nation building. So that's what my intent of this. Now I may may I request Mr. Josie John, Corporate Advisor and Independent Director of Safety Catch, to share his views on today's topic. The, the core of uh, sustainability is down to safety. So if you educate people, you are actually empowering them. And when you empower people, it becomes easier to enforce. So this 3E model is a very good model for safety practitioners, especially those who are here, the, uh, uh, I mean, those who have just completed their studies and who are now roaring to move on to the next level. If they keep these three E's in mind, I'll tell you, your job is going to be very, very easy. As part of education, yes, you will, when you transfer knowledge, you educate yourself. I always keep saying, in teaching you learn and in learning you teach. And that's what education is all about. Particularly in safety, we, we discuss a lot of case studies because that is how one person's experience, the knowledge that they've received gets transferred to another person. So we had a lot of information being exchanged today. I would say that today there's been an overload of information but let's hope there's no application deficit when we get out of these places. But being people who are very focused, who are very passionate about safety, this three of education, empowerment and enforcement, you'll be definitely looking forward to implement it. Please join me in welcoming Dr. V. R. Ranjit to share his insights. If you are taking thoroughly the knowledge, uh, sorry, the definition of hazard and accident, so there are three aspects. One is there should not be any injury to human and there should not be any environmental damage and there should not be any uh, what you call that? injury, uh, sorry, property damage. So there are three aspects. Human is there, environment is there and property is there. So I request my safety professionals. So you are something like a total loss control professional. So you have to, whatever you are getting or whatever you are acquiring, you have to become through your passions, you can become a total loss control. So whatever may be the action, in your action, you have to take care about these three things. The first human, second environment and... Next, I invite Mr. Gauri Dasan Nair. And why? Safety is not a matter of culture. If you ask me, I, I, would, I would think of safety as a matter of culture, of a society, of every society. And as Balas has said, you know, that is where you, know, we, you need to be thinking about every moment rather than about decades or five-year plans or things like that. It, it needs to be there in our mind every moment, every second. I would like to invite Mr. Rajiv Ramakrishnan. Now, may I request Mr. Sandosh S. Nair, our GM Operations, to say a word of time. As we bring this remarkable event to a close, it is an honor and a privilege to extend our deepest gratitude to everyone who has contributed its success.